Well, the simple answer, as I say, is not enough. We are, it's nice that Oceans Day and Oceans Week draws our attention to the oceans. And as a, your report just mentioned, uh, you know, the plastics pollution problem is, is getting worse. But we need to realize this is an ocean planet and our health is dependent upon the oceans. What about something that I had never considered and it's called, I mean, who, who knew that this was actually a problem? Ocean noise. It's impact on whales and dolphins. Explain that one to me. Sure. Well, the oceans, and most people are not aware of it, so thank you. The oceans uh, transmit sound much better than air does because of their density, and sound can travel for miles. And all of the vessels that uh, apply the oceans, the engine noises, but also seismic testing to find oil and mineral deposits, all of those loud noises that are underwater affect the, uh, the hearing of, of marine mammals, particularly the whales and dolphins, as you say. John, which are the cleanest oceans in the world? Wow, the cleanest oceans in the world. Um, you know, oceans can, be, <laughs> oceans can be polluted by things like oil, so that could happen in a number of places, or the, the effluent from rivers. Um, we tend to see the clearest oceans in the world in places like the Bahamas, where there are shallow waters and coral sands underneath, so the oceans reflect and are transparent. But interestingly, the healthiest oceans often have the richest life, and the colder oceans have more marine life, the phytoplankton and, and small uh, creatures, if you will, the krill, that um, actually make the ocean less clear but are a, a richer ecosystem. So it's a confusing phrase when you say, what, what's the, you know, the clearest or cleanest part of oceans in the world? So, so what is behind this? Why are some oceans more polluted, more murky uh, than others? What's behind that? Well, there's two or three different things. Pollution emanates from typically from rivers or maybe even direct from the coastlines. But we know from all over the world and particularly in Asia, unfortunately, uh, with the economic growth, there's more and more uh, use of rivers as sewers and carrying pollution out to sea, thinking like it, it doesn't matter. So that's one problem. Then there's dredging. When we cut through coral reefs and dig harbors deeper and uh, make new entrance ways for marinas, that that silt pollution, the dirt that we're stirring up, that may settle down on coral reefs. So that's a different form of pollution. Um, and then there's oil pollution, maybe a vessel. There was just a vessel in, uh, I think it was Sri Lanka, that broke up last week with both oil pollution, but even worse, uh, the plastics pollution. It was carrying a load of, a huge load of plastics which are now in the ocean and will be eat, eaten in the, into the food chain uh, as it goes up you know, into larger animals, which we will eat, ultimately. So, John, I'm looking at the map behind you. Um, most people know that 70% um, of the Earth's uh, surface is covered uh, by water. So, clearly, it, this is a big deal. Talk to me about what you want people to take away on this uh, World Ocean Day. What is your message? Well, thank you. You know, we, we have 8 billion people in the world, and we may not think of the oceans very often, but as you say, it's over 70% of the surface area, so typically out of sight, out of mind. But the oceans produce half the oxygen in the world, so they're important for that because we need oxygen. And um, they also are likely the biggest source of protein, if you think of all forms of seafood. So we depend upon the oceans for food and for oxygen, and it'd be hard to make a stronger case of why we should care about their health. All right, we'll have to leave it there. John Englander, thank you very much.